One week since the United States obliterated parts of a Syrian air base with 59 Tomahawk missiles. Since then, the president hasn't taken any further action against the government of Bashar al-Assad. But the administration says last week's chemical attacks on civilians means Assad must leave. He must leave the country. Congressman Thomas Massey does not just oppose the bombing of Syria. He says he's not even convinced that Assad was behind the chemical attack. It was a predicate for our response. Congressman Massey of Kentucky joins us now. Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me on tonight, Tucker. So don't let me characterize your position. State it for us. You think that it has not been proved that the Assad regime was behind the chemical attack. Is that correct? Well, you know, the truth is the first casualty of war. And we're going to have four versions of the story coming forward. We're going to have the U.S. version. We're going to have the Russian version, Assad's version. And then there's going to be the truth in there. And we haven't been provided the details. I mean, I think it's incumbent upon the president to provide those details, at least to Congress. And, so, and you know uh, what, Tucker? In, 20, in 2013, just quickly, uh, when they came to Congress and gave us classified briefings, when they had everybody convinced that Assad had used chemical weapons, in those classified briefings, they were not able to compel us uh, to believe to, with sufficient evidence that Assad did it and that we should get involved. So two things jump out at me based on what you just said. One, that you listed the United States alongside Russia and the Syrian governments as of equal believability, A. And B, that you're a sitting United States congressman and you haven't seen evidence that convinces you. Are you not in a position to demand that evidence? No, well, let me tell you what, it's not equal believability. Obviously, we are way more believable than Russia or Assad. But what I'm telling you is that it's going to be hard to find the truth now that we've already done the attack. And frankly, our, our government has no interest in finding evidence contrary to the, uh, the popular notion right now in the U.S. media that Assad has done it and there's, that right. shouldn't be questioned. Well, there certainly is the feeling that it shouldn't be questioned. But again, I want to get back to your position as a sitting member of Congress. I guess the assumption is you're privy to information the rest of us aren't. You're helping to run this government. Are you confident that you're not able to get that information? You couldn't just call up and say, for example, to CIA or another intelligence agency, I want the information now. What would they say if you did? Um, they probably wouldn't provide it to an individual member of Congress, but we, we wouldn't do that on a phone line anyway. I would have to go to D.C. and get in okay. a skiff. Huh. But I guess the point is the information that you saw, the intelligence presumably classified, did not convince you. To the extent you can characterize it for us publicly, it, what was it? it no, that was in 2013. Let me clarify that. When they gave us oh, the, the classified first chemical briefing attack, in... Right. That, that's correct, in 2013. And the reason it was classified is they did not want to disclose their intelligence gathering methods, which, and that's fair. But um, I think that there is some obligation to this administration to show something other than what we're seeing in the news clips, uh, to the public, in fact. So, I mean, the, the leaders of the Republican Party seem convinced, the leaders of the Democratic Party seem convinced, the Senate Majority Leader who's in your, your state delegation seems convinced. He says he believes it. What do they know that you don't know? Or are they just more trusting? Oh. Well, they, they could be both. They could know things I don't know, and they could be trusting. But the burden of proof here should be at least as high as it is in, say, a murder case. Right. Because, frankly, we, we are trying Assad for war crimes in the 24-hour news cycle right now. And I'm, not, and I'm not defending him. I'm just saying, where, where's the evidence other than the newsreels that are coming out? So if you could just speculate, finally, why aren't more members of Congress taking your position? Uh, a good question. But I think the, the position that I think you're going to find a lot of members of Congress taking, in fact, we're sending letters to President Trump and we're sending a letter to Paul Ryan. And that position is, regardless of, of what you believe, and what the appropriate response should be. This needs to be debated in Congress. And that's why we are sending those letters right now. Because ultimately, you can debate the, the War Powers Resolution. You can debate the Constitution. Right. But at some point, somebody has to pay for $100 million of Tomahawk missiles and any escalation that could happen. And, and frankly, we've all got people in our districts that could be put in the line of duty or go to war because of this 
uh, act of war. And so this needs to come before Congress. That's the position right. that my colleagues have, are, are taking right now. Your, your district more than most. I don't think that's a question Nancy Pelosi is going to be facing anytime uh, soon. Mr. Massey, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tucker. Great to see you. Thanks.